Jena, the second largest city in Thuringia, is rich in cultural history and scientific success stories. It is not only home to the Friedrich Schiller University, but also a large number of non-university research institutes. One of the first on the Beutenberg campus is the Leibniz Institute for Natural Product Research and Infection Biology, or HKI. Scientists here are investigating the different types of microorganisms that can cause dangerous infections, but also produce natural products that might potentially form the basis for developing new drugs. The team in the Chemical Biology Junior Research Group at the HKI, led by Christina Bemelmans, is investigating microorganisms from a special insect system. My research group is interested in microorganisms such as bacteria and fungi which are associated with different types of insects. We are interested in particular in the fungus growing termite system which is a very old ancient symbiotic system. The microorganisms in this system have enormous potential for producing new natural products. To identify them, the group is using different techniques from chemistry and molecular biology. They are also working closely with the groups led by Michael Thomas Paulsen in Denmark, Duur Arnen in the Netherlands and Wilhelm de Beer in South Africa. To study the system, Wilhelm de Beer invited the groups to the Forestry and Agricultural Biotechnology Institute, or FABI, at the University of Pretoria in South Africa, one of the leading universities on the African continent. I'm a mycologist, so I'm working with fungi and specifically with insect-fungus interactions in the forestry system where it is bark beetles and the fungi that they carry. Interaction and communications between microorganisms and any higher eukaryotes are essential for their survival and development and demonstrate how closely linked the research areas of ecology and chemistry actually are. The interdisciplinary research group is therefore planning to collect termites, microorganisms and soil samples in their natural environment, in the grasslands and savannas in the southern hemisphere on the African continent. Fungus-growing termites, called Macrotermitinae, belong to a subfamily of the termites and originated in the African rainforest 30 million years ago. Over time, broad diversification occurred and different termite genera developed, such as macrotermes, microtermes, and odontotermes. They are important decomposers of plant material due to their mutualistic symbiosis with the fungus termitomyces. Well, we're now trying to excavate a uh, fungus growing termite, odontotermes. Um, and we hope to get down to the fungus combs that are built by the termite workers. The termites store the fungus in special cavities deep in their nests and feed on it. Well, the material is a, it's a comb structure built of fungus mass. Mm -hmm. And um, this is a fungus that the termites rely on and maintain by providing it with a plant substrate. I'm particularly interested in understanding better how different organisms work together. Mm -hmm. And the termites are completely, um, or they completely rely on both the fungus as well as these bacteria. Oops. The fungus serves as the main food source for the termites. The agricultural behavior of the insects is comparable to human crop domestication. Another termite genus, Macrotermes, is well known for its giant mounds, which are often visible from far away. Well, basically we're now going to open it up and we will be looking for both termites and a fungus comb, so where they grow the fungus. I'm mainly interested in the interaction between the fungus and the termites, uh, with a special focus on how new mounds obtain their fungus. So how do they get the fungus if they start a new yeah. mound?
My PhD project is focused on, it's, in fact, it's a comparative study between different genus and different species of fungus growing termites. We want to look at metabolic adaptations to decompose different plant materials, since different species of fungus growing termites collect different plant substrates. We're now standing in a Macrothermus natalensis colony um, and we have just hit some of the first parts of the fungus garden and we're now still trying to go a bit deeper um, so that we can go in from the side and hopefully get clean fragments of fungus as well as workers and soldiers. The actual research work now begins. Termite workers and soldiers are collected and sorted and samples of the fungal co-material are taken to isolate the fungal species of each nest and isolate DNA and RNA samples for further genetic analysis. After excavation, the complex architecture of the nest becomes clear. The fungal co-material, often larger than the size of a hand, is kept in cavities which are connected by a complex tunnel and ventilation system. The third important termite genus is Microtermis. These insects differ from the first two in several ways. So Microtermis is the most derived of the fungus growing termites. Um, but they are very small, they are tiny workers. And what you will most often find is that all the workers will have disappeared by the time you find the fungus garden, which looks uh, and typically is about this size. So also in this, uh, in this genus of termites, uh, they rely on this fungus for food. Uh, but we know remarkably little about this genus, perhaps especially because they're so small and that you only really find them when you're looking for termites of the bigger mounds that you can see with the, with the naked eye. The heart of the colony is the royal chamber where the termite queen and king reside. It has a very hard and specific shape and is easy to recognize. The royal chamber is only taken for further analysis on rare occasions, as the colony will die if the royal couple are removed. Depending on the size of the termite nest, the scientists can collect enough material for all their planned experiments in the laboratory. After that, the nest is carefully closed so that it can recover and grow again. Well, so now we came back from the field and we brought a royal chamber uh, where we hope that the queen and the king reside. The chamber protects the royal pair from most outside influences. Workers and soldiers carefully monitor the royal couple the eggs and the freshly hatched nymphs to guarantee optimal reproduction and the health of the colony. The queen's abdomen is significantly larger and this makes her immobile and vulnerable. She is mainly responsible for reproduction in the nest and can lay several thousand eggs a day. The king is smaller in size and looks more like a cockroach, which is a close relative of the termite. Back in the laboratories, the scientists start to obtain the first results from their field trip and prepare the different samples for direct analysis, downstream processing and transport. I'm mainly interested in the fungus of the symbiosis because the mushroom that this fungus makes has, uh, contains a lot of proteins and th those can be eaten by, by people and since proteins are going to be short over the coming years as, as a food source, 
We would like to be able to cultivate the fungus without the termites. And by doing so, we will also gain more insight into what the termites do for the fungus and vice versa. In addition to the symbiotic fungus, bacteria play an equally important role for the termites. Since all plant material first passes through the gut of the workers before entering the nest, their gut microbiome is likely to be a key element. I'm interested in the bacteria which reside in the gut of Macrotermis natalensis. I want to discover whether natural products with antibiotic properties are produced by these bacteria and whether they help protect the individual termites and therefore the whole colony. To do this, I need to prepare the samples at the Fabi immediately after collecting them in the field. The first step involves dissecting the gut passage in termite workers and extracting the bacterial genetic information from there, cleaning it, and then further processing it. The DNA samples of the microorganisms might show the scientists in future whether natural products play a role in the defense system of the termites and they will hopefully reveal the genetic code for their biosynthesis. But the samples will also help them study aspects of insect behavior and evolution to understand the dynamics of termite colonies better. This interdisciplinary research approach, which combines pure and applied sciences, will help scientists understand the ecology and chemistry of these complex interaction networks to a better degree and how they evolved over time. After an exciting and fruitful time at the University of Pretoria, the scientists would examine the prepared samples and microorganisms at their home institutes in detail. They will probably face enormous challenges, such as the full characterization of the natural products or analyzing and interpreting the genetic codes of the microorganisms and insects. But the prospect of discovering that one of the characterized compounds might be a candidate for a drug for treating humans in future provides enough motivation for them to continue their work.